Hey everyone, welcome to another Painting with Jay. It's been a couple weeks, but it's time to get painting. So grab a brush, grab some models, grab some paints, paint along with me. Let's rid our world of unpainted models. And as always, this video is a free video and sponsored by Patreon subscribers, which you'll see the credits at the end. So thank you all to Patreon subscribers for supporting my videos. I hope you enjoyed this one. And let's get started. So this week I'll be continuing to work on those Burna Boys. I've gotten most of the colors done. You know, they're well on their way now. Just gotta do the metallics on the remaining of them. And uh, we'll get going. And then I'll start washing them. Life will be good. So, yes, let's get painting now. Hey everyone, so today I'll be working on these knobs. Might as well get started. Grab a paint, grab, and uh, the paint, of course, will be Lead Belcher and my palette, and get started on painting. Painting, 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 painting. And I'll discuss what's been going on lately. It's been a while. I haven't been able to produce many videos lately. I've been stupidly busy. Yeah, it's summertime. I've been trying, I'm working my butt off. I really have, and I've been trying to just enjoy a little bit outside of my work, so I don't have as much time to do things, you know. I really haven't, but that's okay. We're gonna get videos back on track slowly but surely. And stop calling it Shirley, um, and it'll be okay. Like this week, there was a vlog, there was a painting tutorial, oh, sorry, not painting tutorial, battle report by this point, so. The battle report is good. It'll be up probably today. I think the battle report will be up tonight. And um, this will be up technically tomorrow, you know, based on what I'm filming it. So it's all good. Yeah. So right now I'm just working on these these Burna Boys. They are a lot of fun to paint. I'm having fun going back to my orky roots. And then after the Burna Boys, I'm going to paint... Um, I'm gonna paint some uh, grunt tanks because I got some grunt tanks in the mail today. And I filmed an unboxing video. But here's the fun story for y'all. Um, my mail isn't coming to me right now. It's kind of annoying. Uh, not all of it. Some of the packages. Some of the mail comes to me, but some of the mail doesn't come to me. Uh, when my soon-to-be ex-wife left. She created a mail forwarding address, and uh, she's been getting a lot of my mail by accident. Her nail, her na her nail, her name isn't even that similar to mine, but uh, she gets my mail. So she drops it off about once a week, and she dropped it off today. And there was a package, actually a couple packages. One of them was a uh, for the Kickstarter of those models I, I supported. So I did a couple unboxing videos. They'll be up probably tomorrow as well. That's cool. This week's painting tutorial in the warp, in case you're curious, is a uh, Legion of Everblight um, small war beast thing. I forgot what they're called. It was a lot of fun to paint up. So that'll be up in the warp before this video goes up. Mm -hmm. So yeah, life's good. You know, I'm working my butt off. I'm really pushing hard for promotion at my other job because uh, promotion would mean a simpler life, a lot less work, work hours, and I can get back into a lot really making videos, I think. We'll see. guys cool look at them so that's cool yeah they're fun to paint up little little burn boys they're um painting works is fun to me it's not too hard you know it's pretty an easy it's a pretty easy uh painting job so another burn boy done well, at least this step, and then we'll get to the next step after cleaning up and then shading. So, another one done. Let's go to the next one. What have I been doing so far? I've been doing. I've been being a little more active, and it's been fun. It's, I'm kind of kicking my own butt uh, physically, which has been kind of cool. I don't mind that. I don't mind that 
feeling the next day when you work out too hard and you're like, oh, I can't move. It sucks that you can't move, but I feel like I've accomplished something when I feel that. Right? So. Yeah, so I've taken up running. I never was, was a big runner. Um, I found that I've gotten some new, um, some new, uh, what are they called? The shoe insoles. I got those a while ago. Um, what are they called? The insoles. Cushioning insole things. Cushioning insole things is what I'm saying. And they really do worked a bit better, so I'm taking up running, I'm trying to be a bit more active. As I said, I've lost just over 15 pounds um, in the last three or four months, which is not bad. It's not it's not terrible, right? It's not bad. And what is the term? That's gonna bug me. Orthotics. But um, orthotics was what I was thinking of. But uh, I have. Just trying to be more active, you know, trying to be more serious and move a bit more, eat better, get in better shape. You know, that's what I'm doing. So my goal is to hopefully be down um, another 10, 15 pounds. Well, 10 pounds probably by the end of the summer because we still have about two months left, right? So another 10 pounds. Maybe by the end of the summer, we'll see. So that'd be good. Just gotta continue, work hard. I'm going to a lot of concerts because the Peterborough Music Fest is bit, is now in full swing, which is cool. Um, it's a little awkward because of a couple things, but I'll, maybe I'll discuss that later. We'll see. Um, but yeah, I'm going to bunch of the concerts so it started off with Serena Ryder and Serena Ryder was really good she swore a lot which was really weird now I'm not against swearing I don't care really like I'm not offended or anything by that but there's context right it's a family concert there were tons of kids in the audience and she just kept dropping f-bombs like she walked up to the stage grabbed her guitar played three chords and then started swearing and people got really offended by it and, and left and then she had to do like a, she did a public apology um, and it was really weird, so, really, really weird. So that was Serena Ryder. Serena Ryder's actually from this area. She's a Canadian pop rock slash country star kind of thing. She sang a song called Stompa, which is probably what she's known the best for. So she was first. It was good. Like, a good con. When she sang, it was good. Just when she didn't sing, she, she really looked drunk, to be honest. She, um... She didn't seem all there, so. So, yeah, Serena Ryder. Next was actually an interesting one. Uh, it was Kiefer Sutherland. Now, those who don't know, Kiefer Sutherland, Jack Bauer, right? 24. Picture Jack Bauer singing country music. It was a really interesting experience. He was good. He was actually pretty good. The only thing that the problem was that he didn't have much engagement with the audience because the audience didn't know any of his songs. Right? He played a couple Johnny Cash songs or um, you know Bob Dylan songs, but um, a couple songs that weren't his. Right? But most of his music was his own, and he was he told a story behind it and you know played it, and that was cool. And we we're all like clapping along and stuff, but no one knew any lyrics to his music. And the problem is if the audience doesn't know the song, it's really hard to get the audience engaged in the song. Unless it has, like, a catchy hook, you know, or, like, a, a response part of the song where, you know, the audience sings it to a very easy and memorable, you know, chorus or something. But it didn't really have those for most songs. So it was mostly like, oh, Kiefer Sutherland is playing country music. And then he'd, he'd play, and you're like, oh, good song. And then he'd play another one. Like, oh, yeah, that was, that was good, too. Except no one knew any lyrics or anything because um, no one's familiar with the songs, right? So it was in, it was interesting. A good concert. It wasn't bad at all. Um, I just wish I knew some of his music so that I could actually you know, be engaged in it. Um, next, I saw I'm Mother Earth. Now, I'm Mother Earth 
is a Canadian alternative band that was pretty much popular at the same time as another Canadian alternative band. They're both in the same area, right? Uh, I Mother Earth is mostly from Peterborough and the surrounding area. The other band I was thinking of is I, it, that sounds very similar is Our Lady Peace, right? So it's Our Lady Peace and I Mother Earth. Um, Our Lady Peace was from Toronto. Both were really popular in the mid to late 90s or, you know, in that, in that really, you know, alternative, popular era of music, right? A lot of alternative bands were really popular. And uh, basically they had one album that launched them to stardom, and then the one album that was very, very popular because they were already into stardom, and then the lead singer quit the band. His name was Edwin, and then he quit the band. But they did a reunion tour, basically, and so, like, you know, like Guns N' Roses is doing right now. But, uh, so it was cool seeing the original singer, Edwin, playing with, uh, the band. And they were really good. I Mother Earth was really good. They were really loud, but, you know, like, every song had a crazy solo. But, uh, they were really good. You know, it was cool seeing them back together again with the original lineup. Mm -hmm. You know, for anybody who was a teenager or older, like me, in the, in the, uh, 90s, remembers I Mother Earth. So it was cool seeing them. They were the... The third band I saw. The next one was actually a late 80s, early 90s pop star from Canada named Gowan. He sings a song called Moonlight Desires and Strange Animal. Um, most people would actually know Gowan these days is he's actually the, the current lead singer of the band Styx. So uh, Gowan, his music, uh, you know, his backup musicians. The drummer was actually the, the, the drummer from Styx, and he was really, really good. He did a 10-minute guitar so, uh, drum solo as a, um, as a, you know, a, you know, like when they play those, when one musician plays and everyone else kind of takes a break, that's kind of that what that was, right? He played a 10-minute solo so that everyone else could take a break from the stage, and it was good, really good. It was cool seeing him rock out, you know, the really good drummer. Good, very good solo. And Gowan, he's actually really good energy. It was weird, like he had such a weird hairstyle. His hairstyle was um, like yellow. I wouldn't say blonde, I'd say yellow sides. And he had a giant blue stripe, kind of like a skunk kind of thing. Picture a reverse skunk and a blue stripe down the top of his hair. So he was, if he was an orc clan, he'd definitely be Bad Moons. Let's just say that. But uh, the concert was really good. He, uh, yeah, he rocked it. You know, it's good seeing someone. You know, I haven't really listened to his music in many, many years. So, and then um, this week was a band from Newfoundland. It was really good, actually. Really good band. They sounded almost like Passenger. I'd say Passenger mixed with. Hmm. Um, Passenger mixed with, I don't know who. I have to think about it. Maybe Arcade Fire mixed with Passenger. And, yeah, they're, uh, I don't even know how to describe their music, but it was, you know, like folk rock, I guess. I don't know, hard to describe their music. But uh, they're from uh, Newfoundland, and they're really good. Really, really good. So I'm enjoying it. Those are the concerts so far. And there's, oh, it's, I also saw another one a little while ago called, because uh, there's two a week. That's why it's, I can talk about these. So there's one called uh, Songs of, of String. They were pretty good too. They're probably the weakest one of all the ones I've saw because they were very instrumental and uh, wasn't, you know, instrumentals weak or anything. They just, it was a very small crowd. It wasn't very big. But uh, yeah, Songs of String. So, I've really been enjoying it. That's one of the things I've been doing this summer. Just going to the concerts, taking my mind off things, because I'm working so hard. Right now, I'm, I'm still making videos, just not obviously nowhere near as frequent as I used to, because I'm just so busy working two other jobs, and I'm studying right now for some extra certification, which will hopefully lead to a promotion, because if I can promote myself at one of my jobs, I can quit the other. And by quitting, I can free up a lot of time 
that I can spend either making videos for you all, relaxing, maybe meeting someone. You know, it'd be nice. It would be very nice. I did have a day off. I worked every day in June. So my my prior day off was uh, May, the, the Monday of May 2-4. And then, sorry, that's sorry. Fingers cracking. Uh, and then I worked every day in June. Between my two jobs. Plus this one. And then I had July 1st off because it was Canada Day. And then for Canada Day, I went to a birthday party. I relaxed. I, I almost felt like I didn't want to get out of bed. It was really fun because I didn't have to be anywhere. So I stayed in bed till like 11 because I just was so in the mood to sleep. Yeah. And I went to a birthday party. One of my friends turned 50. So it was his 50th birthday party. So. Yeah, it was really good. So that was fun. Saw the fireworks. These guys are really coming along. Oh, I mean, I missed a spot. Speaking of missing a spot, Adam, Cody Roo, missed a spot. People ask me, by the way, where did that come from? It really didn't come from much. I just knew that Adam was watching my videos and it was kind of a way for me to get doing a shout out. It still is. I do a shout out to Adam and now Cody Rue by telling him they've missed a spot. You know, Adam is a phenomenal terrain guy and he doesn't really miss spots. I should say that, you know, he doesn't, I'm not discrediting his painting skills or anything. He doesn't miss spots, but he, I just love saying that he missed a spot. Especially the fact that it's trippy if you're painting along with someone right now like me and then all of a sudden I say, Hey Mark, you missed a spot. And then Mark, Come on, Mark. I know you're watching. And then Mark will be like, hey, Jay, how'd you know I missed that spot? Or don't say I missed that spot because I didn't miss a spot. Kind of fun. Trippy. I should just exchange, you know, change names around and just say, James, you missed a spot. Walter. These guys are really coming along. As I said, they're going to be probably by the end of this video that we almost done. Maybe I'll be cleaning them up and, and shading them by the end of the video. I'm still not 100%. I'm still sick. And that's the thing. I just keep working. And I keep, you know, I have a cough still. Every now and then I just choke. I'm burning myself out. I really am. It's okay. Like, I'm feeling good. I'm, I'm not sad. I'm not depressed. I'm not, I was never really depressed or anything. But um, I'm not feeling bad or anything. I'm feeling quite positive. I'm just tired. Because I have to work a lot. And I will have to keep working until I can change my own stairs, you know? And it will happen one day. I'm confident it will happen. But, um, yeah. Oh, I, I missed his bolt on his chin. Oops. Yeah, I'm, I'm confident it will. If I keep working hard, my stars will change and good stuff will happen because it will. You know, look what's happened with my YouTube stuff. It's really been an amazing ride. So let's keep going. That's done. So now I'll just clean up some colors, I guess, on them and uh, start shading them one by one. Um, work on those guys after. Oh, maybe I should do the wiring. Yeah, the wiring would be good. 
Yeah, let's do the wiring. For the wiring, I should do a red. So let's do my fist on red. I know they're really blue, but I want the red to, like, you know, hot wire fire, you know. So. And it'll break up all the blue and silvers and colors, so it'll be okay. Makes them really pop. And as always, I should mention that other than my metallics, I always thin them down with some lamium medium. Nice and thin. Big one, nice. Then afterwards, I'll go model by model, clean it up. Oh, I still do the teeth on some of them. Yeah, we'll keep going. We'll figure out what step up, you know, one at a time. One step at a time. Oh, bad Jordan Sparks, so huh? Why am I saying that? I'm watching a lot of baseball. Jays are playing well. They're not top T. They're not the best in baseball, but um, they're good. They have a chance. They're way better of a spot this year at this time than they were last year at this time. And last year at this time, they made the playoffs. Now they had a slightly different team, but not old, not very different. Like five or six players different out of twenty five. It's not. A, it's mostly the same team. So we'll see. I'm confident that this that this right now they're in the wild card spot already. Um, but they're only two games back, so we'll have to see. We have a solid team. Five teams made. Five players made the uh, the All Star break. And now in baseball, they've been doing some. Everything's different each year on how people make the All Star break or the All Star team, right? This year for the All Star team, um, one person and for the like the starting lineups were voted in, and the starting lineups were were no single J's. Not a single J made the starting lineup. Because none of them got voted, you know, based on popular vote. It happens. Um, but at the very end, there was a vote for a single player for the National League and the American League. And there was one J. And the thing is about the J, the one Blue J, is that his name's Michael Saunders. And the cool thing about Michael Saunders, to us, it probably won't be that cool and original to you guys who are living in the States, because in the States, you, uh, you all have the same circumstance, but... There are very few Canadian baseball players. Very few. I think there's like 10 or 15 in professional baseball right now in, in the top tier Major League Baseball. And two of them, technically three, because one of them plays on and off for the Jays and, and, and for the underling, uh, the Buffalo Bisons. His name is Dalton Pompey. But there's two other players, Russell Martin and Michael Saunders, who play for the Jays, and they're both Canadian. So that's really cool. Because in Canada, we really um, obsess kind of thing about who is Canadian. You can pretty much, we can, almost every Canadian can tell you who's Canadian. We do deny Justin Bieber now. He's American, we'll say, because he's probably more, he probably spends more time in the States than in Canada. It's funny that Brock Lesnar recently fought under the Canadian flag because he now lives in, in, in Canada. <coughs> but, um, yeah, it's, uh, so we kind of obsess about who's Canadian, but so Michael Saunders was in that final ballot for the final spot on the American League team. Now at the time there were also uh, two other Canadian, uh, sorry, two other Toronto Blue Jays baseball players, or three, sorry, um, uh, Josh Donaldson, Marco Estrada, and um, Edwin Encarnacion on the team. But the Canadians had the chance to vote in a Canadian baseball player who plays for a Canadian team, which is really special. And that happened last year with Josh Donaldson. He's not a Canadian, but he plays for the baseball, you know, the Jays, and we voted him in. So this year there was a huge campaign for the week, basically to support a Canadian playing for a Canadian team. Let's get him into the All-Star game, because he would have been the only Canadian in this year's All-Star team. There was not a single other Canadian for either the national or the American team. So that would have been really cool, and we voted him in. And it's really cool that the States, they published... Um, they published the report of the vote concentration in each state and then just in the country of Canada. In each state, it was it was broken. You know, some states were more than others. Each one, you know, was a little bit towards one guy of the, of the other four others, one guy of the other four others. And, John, and pretty much um, Michael Saunders got, you know, fifth or fourth in each state. But then it showed the country of Canada, where the country of Canada as a whole, 99% of the votes were for... Michael Saunders. Now it's possible. It's probably because he's Canadian, 
and he's playing for Canadian team, so people might argue, you know what, maybe he doesn't deserve to be there. But obviously he was good enough to be on the ballot, and in a lot of ways he deserved it. If you look at the statistics, his statistics were very, very good compared to the other people's as well, if not better in most categories. Um, obviously we're kind of voting in for the sake of being Canadian, but um, that's what a lot of teams do. Most places, like if you live in Boston, of course you're voting in the Boston players because they are Boston, right? And that's the thing. But in Canada, we only have one team, the Blue Jays. So technically all of Canada, like what we find is, and we really ha- really showed it last year, was that the whole country supports the Blue Jays because they're the Canadian baseball team. And this year, as I said, they have two or three Canadians playing for them. And it's really special. So, like, last year in the playoffs, they were showing that everywhere in Canada, people were watching baseball and watching the Blue Jays. And it's really cool because I know, obviously, the rate, you know the stereotype is that we all play hockey. I don't play hockey. I like baseball. A lot of us like baseball. Just Canadian baseball doesn't have a face. Obviously, Canadian hockey has a face. Uh, Canadian basketball kind of has a face. There are some good NBA players that are Canadian. Um, the Raptors did really well this year. They got to the uh, Eastern Conference Finals and lost against the Cavaliers, who ended up winning the entire playoffs. Sorry, I'm just getting a drink of water. It's kind of warm in here. Um, so, yeah. You know, that's it. It was just, it's it's really cool. And they voted him in. And he got into the All-Star game and he had fun. So, that was really cool. Uh, Blue Jays said are playing well. Uh, what else? We're about 25 minutes in. Not bad. So... We're kicking butt. I might run out of conversation piece because not much is new. Like it's been a while since my last. Oh, here's my painting tour model. I think it looks pretty cool. Very, you know, uh, cool. So, um, so let's keep painting. And then the weird thing happened during the National Anthem, the Canadian National Anthem. Uh, they hired, I'm pretty sure it was a Canadian group. The Tenors? I'm pretty sure they're Canadian. I could be wrong. But uh, one of the guys changed the lyrics to O Canada to say All Lives Matter, and then he held up a sign, and the, apparently the other band members didn't know he was doing it. And now they don't want to perform with him anymore. They're kind of upset because singing at a, an All-Star game is a huge... Um, is a huge honor, you know? It's watched by millions of people around the world. And obviously primarily North America, but still around the world. So uh, it was really weird that they did that, you know? It was really weird that they said they, they did that, so. Apparently he, the singer is known to do that kind of stuff. He is very... He's very ethic driven or something, or you say that he likes to, he hates corporate Canada or corporate America. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Let's uh, keep going. Paint these guys' cords. 
red, and then I'll start touching up each guy and then giving him a shade. Um, it's a good getting back in the painting with Jays. I'm going to cut it probably relatively a little short, you know, we're at 30 minutes anyway right now, right? I'm going to keep going. But, um, what else? I'm watching TV shows a little bit. I'm watching a little bit of TV. I'm watching baseball primarily, keeping up with the scores. You know, I'm a nerd. I'm not really a jock, but uh, I feel good. I feel like eventually, like, you know when people ask, like, your body type? Right now I say average. At the beginning, like, when in February, I probably would have said a few extra pounds. Now I'm saying average, and probably another couple months. I'll, I'll say maybe athletic and toned or something. I never was running, and I really like running. Uh, other than the fact that I have giant feet, and they tend to trip me up. I'm in men's 16 shoes, for those who don't know. Women's 18. And the reason why I know that is not that I've worn women's shoes, because obviously they don't make them my size. It's because women's shoes in Canada equals men's size plus two. It's a mathematical formula. Yeah, so, what was I saying? Yeah. What should I do now? Um, yeah, so I run. I know. I ran. I ran so far away. Flock of seagulls, yo. Um, you know what? I'm going to start cleaning up model by model and then hit it with a shade. And Yeah, let's do that. Let's have some fun. I'm, these guys are pretty much my tabletop standard, right? Each color, and I'm going to hit it with a shade, and, and then I'll be good. Life is good. As I said, I'm taking a, I've never ran before. The weird thing was, was my ex-wife was really into running. Now that she's gone, I've taken up running. And it's not that I, I do it to spider or anything. It was just, I, you know, ironic. I decided I needed more cardio. I was, I'm, I'm building a little bit of muscle, but not much cardio. So I'm not losing any weight. And that's, that's essentially why, right? I need to uh, start actually burning some calories. And so I went for a run. And it's been, it's been a good time. And I don't mind. I really like... Did I hit the camera or something? Or is it right there? Ah, yeah. Okay. Um, the reason why I put down that cloth was that it's gonna. I, when I start putting using washes, I get really heavy with washes, so I'm. Uh, I don't want to get too you know messy everywhere. I went and watched some friends play War Machine the other day. It was good. The new War Machine. It's interesting. And hordes. Cool. I went, I went and said for a while to my friend Andy. So Andy, if you're watching this, man, it was a great time. I was a bit tired, unfortunately, because I had to drive all the way there. and It was crazy traffic and stuff. But I, was, I wanted to say goodbye to my friend Andy. He's moving to San Francisco this week. I'm going to really miss him. He's been a really good friend of mine for about mm, 10 years. Uh, 8 years. Something like that. 10 years. Somewhere between eight and ten years. And I'm going to miss him. He's moving down to San Francisco. So, uh, I wish him, you know, the best. And I hate him. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, no, I wish him the best. And I hope he has a great time there. I only hope, and I keep telling this to him, and I know he's listening right now, I hope that he doesn't, he's, he's starting, you know, it's a very expensive place, so he's got to, you know, watch his money. Because it's, San Francisco is a very expensive, expensive city. cleaned up. I'm just cleaning up the blues right now. And then I'll start hitting with a couple shades. Yeah. Good stuff there. Um, he needs more than blue. At least, whoop, there he is. Um, I gotta keep up with the painting, because otherwise you're not gonna see what I'm doing. Yeah. And, um, 
That's in focus. Revy McRoberson's been bad lately. I'm surprised he's not out right now with his revving. He likes to rev. I was filming a painting tutorial earlier, and I figured... I don't do the behind-the-scenes of my painting tutorials, obviously. But if you listen to the audio in the background, it's... Um, like, half it's just revving in the, in the, in the background, because it's just rev, revving with Reverson. But it's all good. What else? My sister's getting married soon, and that's gonna be fun. It's gonna be a little bit of, of a challenge, I think. Um, I'm gonna, I'm there for her, right? I'm, I'm gonna be there for her, because she's my sister, and I would do anything for my sister, right? I'm never gonna miss my sister's wedding. It's the most important day of her life. But it's gonna be tough. It's going to be really tough because I am now the recently separated guy at a wedding. And for those of you who have been in my situation, uh, I have to endure because the problem is it's not a random wedding where you just go and you can be a single person. It's a wedding filled with your family members because it's my sister, right? And so, and I don't see my extended family very often. And the last time I've seen most of them was my sister's wedding other than my grandfather's birthday party, which I didn't talk to them very often during then. So it's going to be hilariously awkward, but I'm going to do it and have a good time anyway and support my sister and enjoy the day. And I'm going to give her money. I've decided that. So a little, so my sister's name is Elizabeth. Now she's not listening because she doesn't watch any of my videos. She has no idea what I do for my videos. But Elizabeth, if you're watching, you're getting money. And I like giving money. And here's why, people. I'm going to lecture you on giving money. People don't, a lot of people these days say they don't want to get money because it's impersonal. But those of you who've been married, money's good. Because money defers costs, right? You spend a lot of money, but you get money back. And it, it just defers the cost. You could put it towards anything, right? So versus a gift card where it's like, you can spend it here. I really like, hope you like Bed Bath & Beyond. Because that's where you have to spend this $150. You know, and then there's the items on the, the uh, registry, which isn't bad either. It's not bad, written items in the registry or anything. But sometimes, you know, you realize that sometimes the people go a little bit crazy with that pricing gun, you know, the scanning gun for registries. And they don't want everything on their registry, or they end up with so much. Like for my wedding, um, it was great, great wedding. But we ended up with a lot from our registry, that basically everything we wanted from our registry. And then like uh, so much money in gift cards for the same store. And we're like, oh, we don't really want anything else. So I give money. And that way they can use it. It defers costs. And it's not the most personal, but it's good. And that's the thing. Because I, I just want to help them start off on the best foot possible. So, that's awesome. let's clean up, start cleaning up these guys. Maybe I should just start shading them. And then, uh, maybe clean them up a little more with the other colors. And then we'll start shading these guys. And then call it, we're about 35 minutes in, to 40 minutes in. So not too bad. It's been a good painting with Jay. Um, Gen Con's coming up. It'll be fun. Uh, I guess it's only like three, four weeks away now. Three weeks away? I've got to get ready for it. I don't even. I got to talk to to Ken because I believe I will be helping out. Not working, obviously. I'm just you know helping Ken out at his booth as I normally do, right? I always just go in and help him out and help out customers. It's by no means paid or anything. I just do it because Ken is a really really good guy from Badger. I love his products. I love Badger products. I I very much support them. And you know what? He's a really good guy. And Ken um, doesn't ever ask for help. And he doesn't really ask for anything from his friends. He always supports his friends. And, and so whenever, ever since I met him, you know, I've noticed he, he likes to work on his own. And he's frequently busy because his booth is very popular now at conventions. And I like to help him just out of the goodness of my heart because he is a good guy who likes people, as Dave from Mini Wargaming would say. And that's, that's what the world's about to me. Um, it's about helping your friends, right? And, and obviously I'm going to go to some events and stuff. I'm not, I'm not there as an employee or anything, but, um, I'm enjoying it. I really am. You know, I love helping him out and just walking by the booth, 
helping like with inventory stuff and yeah by no means am I a vendor or anything you know what I mean but um, just helping just a volunteer so Real. Uh, what else? No, maybe I'll paint the bones. There's some teeth. All the teeth. Paint the teeth now on a few of the models because there's some teeth. And then we'll start shading. Looks good. These guys will be done this week, probably. And uh, next week I'll start on some grot tanks. As I said, the amazing, amazing Ian. That's bo Boss McWaz sent me some more grot tanks and it took me a while to get them because I need to wait for the male person, i.e. ex-wife, to uh, bring them to me because she got them due to my mailing and forwarding address thing. But that's okay. I'm thinking, I, there's a big tournament coming up in Peterborough. Yeah, War Masters, uh, not War Masters, um, what's it called? Uh, Phantasm, it's a lot, you know, which is run by my friend Dave. And um, I'm gonna. I'm thinking of bringing grot tanks. It's not the most serious list, but it, oh, it'd be fun. Everyone's bringing the cheesiest cheese that ever cheese cheesed, and I'm going to bring armor ten around tiny grot tanks of doom. And if I win a single game, I will laugh and have a good time. If I don't win any games, I'll have a good time still. But it'd be just amazingly fun to bring grot tanks because obviously grot tanks are not represented. Those are spikes. Those aren't teeth. The other one is teeth. Teeth, teeth, teeth. Oh, I did all the teeth. Okay, teeth are done. Tea for Sutherland. <laughs> burn up, boys. Burn up, boys. Ah, what should I do now? Maybe just start washing them. Yeah, I'll start doing that. Take some Agrax Earthshade. Hit it with a wash. Tabletop, done. You know, that's what I like to do. Once I find my Grex Earth Shade, I think I left it in my workshop. I could have sworn I brought it back here though. Maybe not. Let's go. Be right back. Grab stuff. Keep talking, y'all. Things amongst yourselves. Well, I did. That's empty. Empty. I think I brought it back here. Use this one. Thought I brought my Agrex Earth Shade. Did I miss it? <laughs> I don't know. That's really weird. Jay searches lostly for his Agrex Earth Shade. Little does he know, Morg's paint has just fallen onto the ground. Okay, let's keep going. That's my grass earth shade. Let's start shading. <laughs> Inspector Gadget. I'm going to go see, now I know people, you're going to criticize me for this. I'm going to go see the new Ghostbusters film. It's out in theaters tomorrow. And I'll probably give my review about how bad it is 
or how good it is. Could be good. Could be good. The problem is it's such a cult classic, right? It's such a classic film in cinema. It's a comedy, and it was such a good cast originally, and it's, it's going to be hard for a reboot in this day and age to do just as good as the original, especially when it has such comic, you know, Dan Aykroyd, Bill Murray, Harold Ramis, Ernie Hudson, uh, Sigourney Weaver, uh, Rick Moranis, you know, just a great, great cast. And we'll see. I'm, I'm curious to see how it does with the new technology and stuff. How does the story, you know, how does it go? Um, there's been a lot of Obviously, talk about the trailer. People, it's like the most hated trailer of all time. But uh, we'll see. You know, I'm I'm curious. I gotta go see it myself. I'm not gonna make any judgments until I see it because I gotta see the film. I gotta know how bad it is in person, and then I'll be like, wow. You know. So I'll talk about it next week. I won't do any spoilers or anything. I'm guessing it's very similar to the original. Other than gender and, you know. The gender part doesn't bug me. I really don't think that bugs me. I don't mind that it's women. The only problem is, though, it seems like it's like the four funny women that are in like everything together. Uh, I really like Kristen Wiig, though. I'm a huge fan of hers, so she's probably the one I'm looking forward to the most seeing. Um, yeah, we'll see. What do you think? My question is, are you guys going to go see Ghostbusters? Are ya? I know some of you are. We'll all go together. We'll have fun, you know, and talk about it next week's painting with Jay. Like, I watched and survived the new Ghostbusters. <laughs> yeah, so we'll talk about that next week. Oh, he needs a little bit more than a couple of colors. These guys are cool. I can't wait to have them done. And uh, on the tabletop and everything. You know, it's been working on them for a few weeks. But uh, this year, I'm not definitely not as going to be the year. It's definitely not going to be the year of painting. It hasn't been. And uh, that's okay. It's okay. It's okay. But we're still getting work done. You and me, we're painting together, reading the world of unpainted models. You know, even with these guys, it's 10 models. So it's 10 less models I have to paint, 10 more models that are painted and on my shelf. Life's good. That's, that's pretty good, you know. 10 more models ready for games. Uh, is he done? Nope. So I'm really excited to see how much, how many models I get done this year and how much work. It's been probably the most interesting year of my life. Last year was probably the most fun I've ever had in a year, I think. It was probably the most fun year I've ever had in my life. All the adventures I had and stuff. This year, it's been the most interesting. Uh, demanding. Uh, tough. Educational. I've, I've pushed myself more this year than I ever have, and for that I'm, I'm grateful for the circumstances. You know, obviously I don't wish what I'm going through upon anyone, though I most I know several of you have or are going through the same thing. I'm not going to drop any names because I don't want to call you out in front of everyone. But uh, Keith, no I'm kidding, I just chose a name off the top of my head. Um, I don't want that. I don't want anybody else to go through what I've gone through, but it does. It happens. That's life, you know? It's... That's life. That's what all people say. Um, that's it. it. That's it. And it's life. And life happens. And you just try to keep going. You just try to keep going and work your hardest and get to where you're wanting to go. And and that's it. And I'm happy. I am honestly happy. And I can tell you that with, with honesty. I'm tired. I'm, I'm very tired right now. But I'm happy and tired. I'm working my butt off. I'm 
feeling exhausted because the problem is I just I work out I work and and then I, I, I paint and do some other things but uh, I'm I'm happy I really am so all right I'm probably gonna stop now because the rest of them don't need shading and or just need a little bit more work so I'm gonna end here and we're going to be done but that's good we got 50 minutes in and we got tons of work done look at all of them they're gonna be done for next week let's end now so that concludes another Painting with Jay. I really hope you enjoyed it. Got some work done. Look at these Orc Burnham boys. They're almost done. They'll be done for next week. They're looking good. And as always, a huge thank you to all of you for painting along with me. And a huge thank you for all you Patreon subscribers for supporting my videos. Obviously, your names are over there. Thank you. Huge thank you to them. It's because of them that I'm able to keep making my free content. So a huge thank you. Please go check out my, my Patreon subscription in, link in the description below. And uh, see you soon for more videos. Till next time, this is Jay saying, happy painting. It's me.